counting. Everything continuing to go well toward the launch of it. Okay, Mark Hess reading that letter from President Reagan. I'm sure the crew uh, was interested, but more interested, Gene, in the news that they are indeed going to launch. I, I, I know they appreciated that message from the President. Uh, at this time, uh, as uh, Sally indicated earlier, you know, the crew and the spacecraft all become one. From that nine-minute time on down, you know you're, you're going, unless, of course, you have some final little glitch at the end. Of course, now, if they must... Uh, stop now and recycle. They could not go in 24 hours. It will take much more time. There goes the, the arm being pulled back. We're looking at the white room uh, where they enter into the hatch of the spacecraft being pulled back, and uh, they are now really becoming uh, an independent uh, vehicle ready to go into space. And, you know, night launches are not just something that is done to be spectacular. A lot of people ask, why did we go to the moon on Apollo 17 at night? There was a purpose for it. We could only land uh, at a particular place in the month of December on the moon uh, if we went at night. In a shuttle, it's, it's certainly that way uh, in this particular case to launch an Indian satellite at a particular time in space. And also, and also, according to General Abramson today, to, to get this behind them so that they can plan future night launches if the weather forces them to do that. But, but it, it also means now the shuttle truly now uh, does not have to depend upon landing in daytime in sites around the world in the future. It can land at nighttime anywhere from one coast to the other coast of this country, and it truly makes the shuttle a very, very versatile vehicle. I hope all the people who live in those southern states, uh, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, all of Florida and the Bahamas, can stand outside now. <laughs> I hate to send you away from your television sets, but you might be able to see it. Actually, it'll be about eight minutes before you could see it, but uh, there really might be a view if you can have a, an unobstructed uh, uh, sight uh, to, towards the Kennedy Space Center. You know, night launches, I, I've heard Dick, uh, uh, and I've talked to Dick and, and Dan about their, uh, their training, and they feel that they're very well capable and qualified uh, uh, to make this launch in the landing. But at nighttime, it does take a dimension away from you. Uh, what about the landing, Gene? What's the, what's the difference with the landing? Well, you know, you just see a lot less. Uh, they depend a lot more on instrumentation. A lot of their landmarks uh, are gone. It doesn't mean that uh, it can't be done. It's done every day. Here's a pilot's eye view from a practice landing of the shuttle. Now, this is very much like coming aboard a carrier as I see this film. You see a lot of lights. You don't really have a great deal of depth perception because you can't see what's beyond the lights. When I say nighttime landings uh, or takeoffs take a one dimension of your senses away from you, I think we can appreciate it by looking at this picture. They, of course, maintain that they are not the least bit frightened. They are not the least bit apprehensive. They've done this practice so many times. Astronauts are never frightened, Lynn. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> a little apprehensive at times, but never frightened. We are now within five minutes. Uh, you can hear the uh, uh, the excitement in now the voice of some of the crew members, and I can certainly understand that. Minutes, if we should run into a problem between now and T minus 31 seconds when primary control of the countdown is turned over to Challenger's onboard computers. And we should point out that T minus 31 seconds was a very key moment for Richard Truly the first time he went up. The clock stopped there and they had to uh, go away and come back again before they could go up. Then as we wait for the uh, spectacularness of uh, the sky lighting up, I can only repeat what someone repeated to me one time. They said uh, the night launch of Apollo 17 was like the universe lit up from without. Now, that's hard to understand, perhaps, and that's what I'm waiting for as I watch your, your shuttle eight, the shuttle challenge to go. T minus four minutes and counting. Crew has been asked to close the visors on their launch and entry helmets. Final purge sequence of the main engine is now underway. T minus three minutes, 50 seconds and counting. Orbiter aerial surface test is underway. Orbiter flight control surface is now being moved to a pre-programmed pattern to verify they are ready for launch. Okay, Richard Truly is the commander of this mission. He is a Navy man. And let's take a look and a listen at what he said about the job he is now doing. Well, I think the real fun thing is uh, being the commander of a crew that uh, it's a... Uh, it's, uh, I heard that... ...board fuel cells fed by ground reactants through the T-0 umbilicals. T minus three minutes, 10 seconds. Engine gimbal checks are complete. Shuttle main engines have been placed in the start position. Richard Truly, the commander of the shuttle, which is sitting on the pad right now, ready to go in three minutes. 
When Richard Shirley first took off, it was his 44th birthday. Now he's a year and a half older. The view we see even before launch with the spotlights on the on the bright white painted vehicle is truly spectacular. Minus Ted, uh, uh, if, if I had a wish for you, it would be for you to be down here with us. Ground launch officer will make a final check to make sure the vent arm is fully retracted at T minus 37 seconds. Of course, there are not only humans on board, there are a number of experiments and rest traveling on this launch of the shuttle. warning memory system. The crew now is truly very active. Uh, many things are happening automatically through ground computers. Challenger now running off its onboard fuel cell reactants. But the three men up in the, uh, in the upper deck uh, who are actually going to monitor and, uh, and take over all the control systems uh, if they must, if they need to, either to get into orbit or to bring it back here in case of an emergency, are truly very busy. As Sally said in her interview, you know, prior to T-9, she sharpened her pencils and do that and around. But right now, I guarantee you, they're going down that checklist and... Uh, now completely isolated from ground loading equipment. T minus one minute, 43 seconds, and counting. That is a spectacular view. Of course, the one man doing nothing right now is Dr. William Thornton. He's on the mid-deck area. He's got his sensors cruise. attached. He is going to lie back and enjoy the view, just like these folks. He indicated to that to make this a truly uh, uh, accomplishing flight for him, he wanted to get sick and found out why. Yes. Find out why. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you, though, these guys are in for a thrill because minute, their entrance into space counting. will be noted by a sunrise over Africa minus and one minute, 15 jolly how I can tank now empathize with them. We are told it's going to be almost like daylight here, almost like sunlight. There's about a quarter, of a quarter moon, but it's uh, a bit hidden. T-minus one minute and counting. Sound suppression water system now on. Three liftoff water will be released at T-minus 16 seconds. T-minus 50 seconds and counting. Hydrogen burn igniters have been armed. T-minus 45 seconds and counting. Solid rocket booster development flight instrumentation recorder is going to the record mode. Main propulsion system liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen outboard fill valves have been closed. T-minus 35 seconds and counting. T-minus 31. We have a go for auto sequence start. Challenger's four redundant computer is now assuming primary control of critical vehicle functions from now through liftoff. T-minus 20 seconds and counting. SRB engine nozzle gimbal profile now underway. T-minus 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. We have engine start. We have ignition and we have liftoff. Liftoff, 32 minutes after the hour and the shuttle has cleared the tower. bounced around a little bit. The spectacularness of this, this One minute, this 30 moment seconds, is velocity 3,700 feet per second, altitude uh, 12 and a half miles, downrange nine miles. And it is still visible to the All naked eye here in the ground. The glow of the solid rockets is very, very clear from here. It's now beyond those upper cloud layers. Uh, we ought to be getting the uh, solid rocket booster cutoff in about uh, 15 seconds here. And we may very well see that into the cloud deck.
standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Roger. Confirm uh, SRB separation. Guidance has confirmed, has con uh, converged. Houston, your first stage performance was nominal. capable of a transatlantic abort to Dakar, Senegal, on Africa's west coast if one main engine fails. This is Bill Schechner in New York. What we're looking at is the launch pad at Cape Canaveral. We, like everyone else, except for our folks in Florida, have been looking at this on television. It was quite special. They told us it would be. Let's look at it again.